Are you guys familiar with mortality tables, insurance companies, companies with retirement plans for you, social security administration, they all keep these tables to predict how likely someone is to die so they know how much money to keep aside for them. It can be morbid, but it's also kind of interesting. There are different formats for mortality tables. This isn't my favorite, so I'll probably make another video showing my favorite layout for a mortality table. This one's good for my first video on this. And basically it tells you if you're age zero, what is your probability of dying in the next year? And then what is your total life expectancy? So you can see here that probably of dying in the next year, if you're 10, it's pretty small. And as you get older and older, it starts to get a little bit higher. And then as you get very old, it starts to get much higher. Someone who's 83 has an 8% chance of dying in the next year. And like I said, this is used for insurance companies and Social Security Administration who deal with large amounts of people. So they can be pretty confident that if they're dealing with 100,000 people, around 8% of those people will die in the next year. And that's kind of what these tables are used for. It's not saying you have an 8% chance of dying next year. It's referring to large groups. If you're incredibly healthy, you're probably more likely to live. And if you are incredibly unhealthy, you're probably one of the people that are more likely to die in the next year. For this video, the one thing I wanted to show is if you're 24 and let's say your parents are 54, did you know that they actually have a higher total life expectancy? So if, if you're 24, based on this table, you're expected to live to be 77.14. And if we look at your parents at 54, they're expected to be 80. So why are your parents expected to live longer than you? You're 77.14 and your parents are 80.32. And some, some people might say, oh, that's because there's more plastic in our diet and, and there's more smog in our air and we have lower quality of life. That's not what this table is talking about. The way to think of this is your parents have already made it to 54. They've survived all of these kill-offs every year. But for you as a 24-year-old, you've got to survive all of this stuff first before you even make it to the 54 they are. And so the table's figuring out that some 24-year-olds are going to die before then. And that brings down the expected life expectancy for 24 on average because of all these. I don't know if I did a good job explaining this. Another thing we can look at is let's find someone who's 115. If someone is 115 years old, they're expected to live to 115 and looks like about 10 months, 11 months. So they're not expected to live much longer, but they are expected to make it to 115. Do you think you're going to make it to 115 if you're a 24 year old? You're probably not going to make it to 115. So the whole idea is, is that this person who is already 115, they survived all of these years and made it to 215. And now that they've made it to 115, they've just got to survive a little bit longer to make it to 115.84. So someone who's 115 is way more likely to make it to 115 in 10 months than someone who's 24. And that's kind of the idea. It's just less obvious when we're talking about your parents who are 54 and you who is 24.